Hi friends, welcome back. It's Carrie from Stretch GTV and this is our live Saturday session. Um, today's all about feet. It's feet day. And um, one, because I put out a Saturday stretch video this morning. Um, so you, if you're a subscriber, you should look there and you will find it in that spot. Um, Oh, the sound on my phone is on. Hold on. Let me let me fix this problem because it's going to drive me crazy. It's just a, I don't know why it's a little glitch, a little funny thing that happens. Um, whenever I turn this on, it, it turns the sound back on on my phone and then there's feedback. Anyway, so hopefully you guys can hear me OK and everything's good. Um, so basically what we're going to do today is work on foot health. Today's Saturday stretch video was about a hamstring stretch where you can actually stretch your plantar fascia in that stretch as well. And then I got a question from one of our um, loyal subscribers who asked about a callus on the inner side of his foot, which led me to pull this book off of my shelf called Reading the Body. It's Oashi's Book of Oriental Diagnosis. Which is, am I reversed on this one? <laughs> you can see it that way. Um, there's a whole chapter in here about feet and reading what different parts of the body um, are reflected by in your shoes and where your shoes are wearing out. Now, his question was about the inner sole of his foot, um, that he was getting a callus on his um, big toe and just on the left side. Well, what's interesting about this is that a lot of my, um, a lot of people who follow uh, this channel are people who suffer from chronic pelvic pain and um, it actually lines up. So um, that meridian line that runs from your big toe comes all the way up into the groin area. And so maybe it's possible that that's where you need to focus your energy. It would be the medial hamstring stretch. So we'll talk about that a little bit. I also have to with me today, a um, it's a field hockey ball. I like either a field hockey ball or a lacrosse ball. They're all really great. If you are uh, my friends in Ireland, a hurling ball would work really well. Um, there's probably a fancy name for that ball that I don't know. So I apologize if I said it wrong, let me know in the chat. Um, and if you guys have any questions as you're here, feel free to leave a question in the chat box. You do have to be a subscriber to do that, um, but please feel free. Um, questions should be about stretching, <laughs> okay? so. Don't please don't ask me about anything um, else. And if you say anything that's not quite pertinent or um, inappropriate, I'm going to block you. OK, so be be real. Be kind. Be nice. Let's be happy here. OK, so the first thing I want to do is just kind of show you guys some real basic things that you can do for your feet. Um, oh, and one other thing real quick. I am actually an ambassador for something called Run Show USA. I will put that link. Um, in the chat at some point after the fact so or you can contact me um, about it but if you're in chicago there's a conference on june 4th and 5th and with that code you can get in free so if you're a runner it's great there's going to be all sorts of speakers and booths and um little classes and all kinds of stuff like that so um so yeah you can get in free with my code okay all right so let's shift the screen oh what did i do i don't know what it did okay I just double clicked on something huge. All right, let's try it again. There we go. Yeah, I am such a um, learning, just learning bit by bit. Okay, here we go. So let's do a little bit here. I'm gonna move this chair. And the first thing I'm going to do is grab my field hockey ball. And this is a really great thing that you can do um, in your house when you're sitting at your desk or anything like that. Just, you know, just kind of taking it easy right on the bottom of your foot, right? Uh, like right here, right there. It's, um, it's like the, the kidney meridians first spot. And the kidney meridian is the, the line that kind of like sucks up the energy from the earth. So it's like this spring of vitality and health. And the more energy you can pull into the bottom of your foot, the better. So what I like to do, first things first, is take the ball, put it on the floor, and then line the ball up with that point of your foot. It's right under the ball of your foot right here. It's a little sensitive usually. And you just kind of like pump it really gently. Like I'm just kind of pushing down and releasing, pushing down and releasing. 
And you think of it kind of like, you know, if you were pushing a button, like, um, do you remember those shoes? Pump them up. What were those, um, like Air Jordans? That's what they were, I think. And they had the little basketball in the front and you pump the ball and it would like fill your shoe up with air, it would, like wrap around your foot, I don't remember. I was not cool enough to have a pair. <laughs> but you know what I'm talking about. So you just kind of like pump up your energy, okay? So it's just a little like, like if you were pushing a button, filling it up with air, right? That gets lots of chi in your body. And you just do the other side, you just pump it. You can do this sitting in a chair too, it doesn't have to be anything else. And if you wanted to use a different type of ball, um, you could use a tennis ball, a racquetball, a golf ball, you know, whatever works. Although a golf ball can be a little intense. So be nice to yourself. I like these bigger ones because they're so, uh, they're so big that you can really control them. Uh, they don't get lost very easily, which is helpful. And um, a lacrosse ball has a little bit of give to it. The steel hockey ball doesn't as much, but a lacrosse ball has a little bit of softness to it. So that's a little bit easier to work with. And so once you've done that pumping motion a few times, then you can just gently roll your foot. And I like to go along my plantar fascia. So this is just up and down between the ball of my foot and my heel in that soft spot in the middle, the place where you'd be the most ticklish, okay? You can kind of find spots that feel a little bit more intense, but like in a good way. You don't want to be in like pain pain. So just kind of find a, a good healthy discomfort and kind of stay in there. And you may notice that you have areas that are a little bit more intense than others. All right. Now what's cool about this is that if you notice that like I'm having tension on the outside of my foot, that means that I'm having problems on the outside of my hip and this side of my body, which is true. I've been having a little bit of a little bit of wiggliness in my hips that I need to work out, but I haven't yet because I just haven't had time. And I'm getting ready to go on vacation. That being said, those of you who are here usually on Saturdays or watch after the fact, I will not have a Saturday session next week, okay? Now I'm just going to move to the inner part. This feels pretty good. But if I had a problem with the inner part of my foot, that would mean that I had a problem with the inner part of my leg. You see, it all kinds of work, kind of works in that way. Now from here, I'm just going to go side to side. So instead of a back and forth, like up and down motion like this, I'm going to go this way, okay? And then you just kind of zigzag down your foot, see if there's anything that needs work, right? Back and forth. It can, ends up being a little bit of a circular motion, but you just go back and forth. This is real easy to do, like when you're at work, you know, you're on a Zoom meeting and you're really bored, put this ball under your chair, okay? You can do this work real easily. And now, let's move to the heel. And this one is, hi, sorry. What are you doing? This one is for, specifically for my pelvic pain guys. And girls, this is really helpful for like the groin area and the muscles surrounding that area and your pelvic floor and that sort of thing from a reflexology standpoint. Reflexology is body work where the everything in the foot relates to the body. It's kind of cool. So like in Osashi's book, Ohashi's book, sorry. Um, here's a funny diagram I'll show you. where you see the whole body in the foot. And so like if you superimpose the two on top of each other, then the eyeballs would be like the big toes and your shoulders kind of come into this spot into here. Your knees are somewhere down here, right? Your organs are all related through the middle here. So that's why the kidney points are right in here. Your stomach's somewhere in here. Your intestines go all the way around. Um, but your heart in here, the lungs come through here. You see? So it's like the whole body superimposed on the foot, which is really cool. All right. So let's shift over to the other foot. And so what I'm going to do is that up and down motion first. And just get that going. Oh, this is really amazing and therapeutic, you guys. You could even, like, if you were on an airplane or something, you could do this on an airplane. Throw the ball in your bag, no problem, in your carry-on. 
And it's so good. Like after a long day of walking, oh my gosh, if you went dancing last night, it's like, there's some days, like if I've been to a, a wedding or if I've been out dancing and I've been wearing high heels and like, I love it. You guys, I'd love to dance and I don't slow down. So if I wake up the next morning, I, there are moments, you may have had these moments too, where you're like, oh, I don't know what it's going to feel like to step down on the floor today. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen. Hi, sorry. Oh, you're flirty today. She loves this table. That's why I have it still set up. I usually take it down. It's her favorite thing, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, see you later. Okay, see you later. So pay attention again to what's going on in your feet. You want to feel things. You want to listen to the signals that your body's telling you. So I'm feeling, again, a lot of tension on the outside of my foot. That tells me that there's problems on the outer hip that I need to address, right? If you feel more tension on the inner part of your foot, then you need to address the inner side. It's the balance between yin and yang, okay? Now, if you guys are um, interested in this kind of thing, you might really like my assessment. It's, um, it's free. It's on my Thinkific channel. I'll put the link also in the description below when I do all the optimization for this video, but you can find it on any of my other videos. And it's usually the end screen. Um, the end screen is when the video ends and there's a video that like pops up. It's the end screen on almost all my videos. So uh, you can check that out. It's a free assessment form. And what you do is you, there's two videos, one for your upper body, one for your lower body, and a bunch of worksheets. And you take those worksheets, do the stretches, and then there's a key that tells you how to score each stretch based off of what you're feeling, okay? So once you kind of can decipher or like translate what your body's telling you, then it tells you a whole lot about what's going on in your body. And you basically score each stretch from zero at the best because there's no barriers to 10 at the worst where there's the most barriers. And then you can kind of get a good picture about what's going on in your body. And then from there, I can help you figure out what the next step is okay for some people it may be really obvious like you need to do stretch g101 or you need to do stretch g201 for some people it might not be that obvious and so we can just schedule a phone call and go over it together okay you just send me the assessment now i'd really love it if you guys would actually send me your assessment numbers so they can put some things together and work it out it's my plan to put together some sort of like Google form or something where I can put all the information into a spreadsheet and then actually get information from it. So now go side to side this way, back and forth. I suppose you could probably try doing this on a foam roller. You just don't have as much freedom with the foam roller as you would with a ball. So hopefully you all have found something you can use at home. If not, run out and buy a lacrosse ball. You can get them at any sporting goods store, and they just have them in like a big tin, like a big tub, a bunch of them. They're all different colors and stuff, and they're not expensive. Or you could, you know, buy them on Amazon or whatever. And then let's go into the heel again to kind of like open up those groin areas, okay? Good, good. Okay, now if we want to work into the shoulders and the lungs, we'll go into the ball of your foot. So we just go back and forth. Now here, I'm just moving back and forth, like actually on the padding here, like where you would stand on like that. So that's a good place to work through. And then you can even work on your toes a little bit, although that's a little bit trickier. Okay, just kind of rolling through. This is more gentle and just kind of like getting energy into that area. So let's do the lungs and the shoulders on this side. So just back and forth, just like this. <laughs> I'm getting a little cramp in my foot. So usually that means that my body needs more chi. Like it's telling me like, hey, refuel. So I'm just gonna go back to that kidney point in the middle of my foot, like right in that, like right in the center. And then do that pump again. And that helps to like release that crampy feeling. And then I'm gonna go right back to it. And then into my toes. Okay, now the next step, and this one's really cool. I hope you can see it okay. Um, basically, what you wanna do is you wanna find a straight line. I'm gonna use my yoga mat because it's got a straight line on it. And I'm going to put my heel on the straight line like I'm walking a tightrope. 
And then I'm gonna lower my pinky toe down to the floor. And then the fourth toe, the third toe, the second toe, and finally my big toe so that they're all down on the floor. I'm trying to spread my toes as far apart as possible. This is really hard to do in the beginning. So don't be upset if you can't, if your foot just goes plunk, that's okay. You just wanna kind of take it, like take it slow, take it easy. And then you're gonna to go to the next one. Now notice that I'm, I'm kind of holding on to the wall. I wouldn't necessarily want to do this and try to test my balance because I'm really focusing on stretching out my feet here. So I'm going pinky toe, fourth, third, second, big toe with my toes really far apart like this. So landing on the outside and coming down. Now I wonder, I could probably, let me just grab the cam, grab the other camera. I switched it so you guys won't be like, what's happening? And I'll just show you my toes. Okay. There we go. Is that okay? Sorry about the little wobble. So I've got my heel down and then I'm gonna go big toe and down. And then I'm just gonna switch here, my heel to my little toe. Now notice how I'm really spreading apart, okay? And I'm gonna switch. This is great to do when you're on phone calls. You just pace around. And there we go. Okay, good, good, good. Oh, sorry, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, that's the cat's catching. You guys are seeing the back of the, this is the other side. <laughs> the cats have this amazing catchery, don't you, Tommy? It was a gift from my sister who has a little bit of a problem with um, Facebook Marketplace. <laughs> and so, so now what would be like some really good foot stretches that you could do? Well, so the, the big one is your calf stretch because all the muscles from your feet come up into your calves here. So the easiest way to stretch your calves is to just come up to the wall, put your hands against the wall, and have your feet a little bit far away so that you can kind of put your pressure on your arms. And then use your arms to push you down into the floor. So I'm actually trying to lift my arms up like this, but the wall stops them. And that upward motion with my arms is pushing my feet down into the floor. So it gives me resistance. Then from here, I just push up onto my toes and then keep resisting. It doesn't have to be a lot and use your arms to push you back down. This is really subtle, very gentle, highly effective. Highly, highly effective. Just like that. Super simple, okay? Now, we have worked on the back of our feet and the calves, like all through here. What about the top? Now, this is really important. And this is a spot that gets really, really neglected. So what I would do for the top of my feet is a couple things. I could take the ball and just roll it up and down along the top of my foot. That's a pretty easy way to do it. You can also take your other heel and just rub the top of your foot, you know, just back and forth. Especially this spot right in between your big toe and your first toe, like the, the thumb and the first toe. That's a really good spot, okay? Right there, you know, rub, up, rub through the top here. Top of the feet get really tight on a lot of people and we kind of neglect, um, neglect the work that needs to be done on the top of the foot. Now the muscles that connect through here, because these are all mostly tendons, there are little muscles in your feet, but the big muscles that pull you up like this are here, it's called the anterior tibialis. So what I like to do here is take the ball, I take it in both hands and I roll it up and down my leg like this. <laughs> I'm wearing like bamboo pants today, they're really soft, so. It's, um, what are you doing, sorry? It's slipping on my pants. But you just roll up and down just like this. 
Now there's a spot right here, right there, that is like an amazing spot for health and vitality. And there's a um, there's like a Chinese medicine thing where you can put moxa on it. Moxa is like this, like a stick made out of mugwort and um, something else. It looks like charcoal. It's black, and you you light it on fire, and it's like a charcoal, so it, it like embers, right? It gets really hot. And people who moxa that spot. Um, tend to live longer actually. So what I like to do is take the ball and put it on that spot and just give it a good, like a good shake, you know, just really liven it up, put some energy into that spot. That's a good one. And helps to release this muscle down the front of your leg. Okay. All right. And let's do the other side. So you're going to roll the top of your foot back and forth. And what this does is it brings health to the whole front line of your body. Okay, so that would be like your hip flexors, your quads. Uh, what else? Groin probably, yeah, the groin would be in there too a little bit. Is there anything in the front of the body, but most likely uh, hip flexors and quads, and then also into the front up here in the front of your body. So once you've got that, you can do the up and down to the anterior tibialis and just roll all the way along the side here. Awesome, awesome. And then once you feel good with that, find that spot. It's right up here. You kind of, if you push, you can kind of find a place that feels a little like a little bit of a divot, a little nervy. It's just a couple couple finger lights, like maybe three fingers under your knee. And it, you're on the outside of the big bone here, okay? It's a soft part. I'm just gonna give that a good shake, okay? With a little bit of force. That's a good one. It's a really good one. I feel like my jaw. <laughs> it's great. Okay, good, good, good. Now, if we want to stretch out the front of our legs here, we have some tools for that too. So the first thing we want to do is warm up that muscle. So what you'll do is just put your hand on top of your foot like this and push up for strength like that. So I'm just giving myself a little bit of resistance and pushing up with my foot. This is just going to warm up this muscle in the front so that we can stretch it really effectively. Okay. So I'm going to push up and up and up. And then eventually you'll start to feel it kind of burn in the front of your leg. Okay, so once you find that burn, then come onto your knees. Now, if this doesn't feel good to you, don't do it, okay? You just, just let it be, because we're going to do another stretch after this, so it will be plenty fine for you. Or look at the Saturday stretch that I did, because it's a really good one, too. So then I'm going to, my foot's already kind of pushing into the ground, because that's it's, what it's going to do in this position. And then I'm just going to lift my knee up, and that's stretching out the front here. And you just go as far as feels good to you, okay? If this hurts your knees, you don't do it. Just don't even bother. You just go back and forth. Now, I'm giving my knee a little extra pull, but you don't have to. Such a good stretch. All right, and then lay on your back. Bring your leg in close to your body, your knee in close. Point your toe up towards the ceiling like you're a ballerina. And now we're going to stretch the fascia. So to stretch the fascia, what you do, notice my knee's bent, my lower leg here and my foot are trying to make a straight line. And all I'm going to do is reach my toes towards the ceiling. So my knee's actually going farther away from me. Keeping my toes straight, and that stretches the fascia line all the way through the front here. It's really awesome. And of course, if anything hurts, don't push for it. Your knee doesn't have to come to straight. It really doesn't. You just go back and forth just like that. It's a really great way to open up the front of your, of your leg all through here. Awesome. Okay, so let's now do the other side. So 
Now I'm just going to take my other leg in front of me, put my hand on top of my foot, and I'm just going to go up and down. I'm holding my leg here just for my own balance. <laughs> you know, you don't have to put your arm anywhere you want. And I just want to warm this muscle up. So I've got my hand on top of my foot. I'm going to push up. This is a strength training move for your anterior tibialis muscle. And I'm just going to do that until it starts to feel a little bit of a burn. I'm getting close. You'll know. <laughs> you'll know because it, it starts to like ache a little bit. And then I'm going to come on to my knees. And I'm just going to lift my knee up as high as I feel comfortable to stretch out the front of my leg, front of my foot into my shin, okay? This is a great one for shin splints too. This one along with the one on the wall. You cannot neglect your calves if you have shin splints. In my opinion, shin splints are caused by calf problems more than anything else, okay? And issues with this muscle in the front. So between the two of those stretches, you'd be pretty well prepared to prevent shin splints through the season if you're starting your running season now, okay? All right, and now lay on your back again. Bring your knee in close to your chest. Point your toes towards the ceiling. So from your knee to your toes is as straight a line as you can get. And then reach your toe up towards the ceiling as your knee straightens out. Bend and stretch. Go slow. See if you can find that tension. Now I'm starting to cramp a little bit in my inner part here, which tells me that I need a hamstring stretch. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, because why not? You may be feeling the same thing. So to do this hamstring stretch, bring your knee open to the side and grab your big toe. So it's, this is my left leg and my left hand, okay? It looks like, looks like this, okay? So I've got my knee out to the side. My left hand is on the inside of my knee. I'm grabbing my toe, and I'm just going to kick down for strength and pull up for stretch. You just go back and forth like this. And this should remove the cramp that's happening on the inside of my foot when my leg is straight. You just go back and forth a few times. And then for balance, I'm just going to do the other side. So bring your right leg up, grab your toe with your right hand, kick down for strength, then up for stretch. Right. And then I'm going to try that fascial stretch again. I'll do it from this angle so you can see it. I've got my knee pulled in close. My foot's pointed towards the ceiling. And I'm just going to straighten out. And now the cramp's better. Ta-da! Awesome. All right, my friends. That's just a little bit of... A little bit of foot love for you today. Now, does anyone have any questions before we chime off? I hope that's helpful for you. All right, and let me find those links for you. I'll put them in um, in this video. You can always come and look for it later. And um, But I can tell you right now that if you go to... Um, hi! Um, stretchytv.thinkific.com. That's my online learning platform. So if you go, I don't know why that, oh, because I put a semicolon. Sorry. Forza Life, do you have a question? You want, I can answer your questions. Let me know what you got there. Tell me a little bit about you. Um, so here's the thinkific.com is my online learning platform. That's where all my online courses are. You want to look for the free flexibility assessment. That's the good stuff. And that's going to help you um, figure out what's going on in your body. Different Thunderbolt variation helps ankle mobility. You know, I don't know what Thunderbolt variations are. Uh, can you explain that? I'm going to look it up, too. Ah, 
oh, hey, Thunderbolt pose. You know what? <laughs> I'm not a yoga teacher. So yeah, um, Thunderbolt pose is the one that we were in earlier. That's um, this guy. Yeah, yeah. So this would definitely help your, your ankle mobility for sure. The problem is, is that sometimes people try to do this pose and their hamstrings can't contract properly. So it's not going to help you to do Thunderbolt variations if you can't sit comfortably in this position. So if you have knee problems or if you're like here, then you have some extra work to do on your quads and your hamstrings to get you into this position. And I actually have a good video for that. Um, it's called how to sit on your heels. Uh, I think that one would have come out um, when was quad season. It was probably early in the year, like maybe Feb sometime in February, I'd say. Yeah, that one came out. Um, that one actually helps you figure out how to sit on your, to sit down like this in a really gentle way. So if you've got that, then doing different variations on this pose would help your ankle mobility. Even like from this position, like practicing leaning back and then pushing yourself back up, that would be really helpful. Um, these up and downs just like this, like we were doing before, that would definitely help. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome, you're welcome. I hope that helps. Um, they would help for sure. The thing is, is that you don't want to neglect one side of one side of the equation. So if you're doing that pose, then you need to balance it out with something that's going to stretch out the back of your body also. So you would have to do hamstring work similar to the stretch that was today's Saturday stretch is, um, this hamstring stretch like this, that would really help. And then when you do this hamstring stretch, basically I'm pushing my leg into my hands and then I'm pulling back in. The full stretch, um, the full explanation of the stretch is, was my stretch that I put out today on my channel, okay? So you can check that out. And then you rotate your foot like this. This is one of the best stretches I found for ankle mobility. When you're in this position and you're resisting, you actually get all the fascia in all the different directions, stretching all at the same time. And it's really interesting because you'll find certain spots, like right now I'm feeling tension right here. So with the, with the tension in that spot, I can kind of play around with it. So I find the angle that works the best, and then I just kind of like wiggle around in that area. It's like erasing the tension. It's kind of how fascia works. It's like a, a thick webbing, like a, um, fascia is like a, a network of this gluey mucus that has spring to it and connectivity and it's um it's this fabric it's like this this webbing and fabric of life so as it's moldable and changeable and you can kind of stretch it and move it and manipulate it and so as you do that you're kind of like loosening up where the fascia is bound up where it might be too thick and then it, it's allowed to redistribute to places where it might be too thin you know, and that really helps with ankle mobility for sure. And then doing the, the quad stretch or the, um, the calf stretch on the wall, like I was saying before. Yeah. Could you cross your feet on top of each other? Why not? I mean, you could, I don't see, I don't feel I don't feel anything different here. The only thing that I feel when I cross my feet on top of each other is that I'm actually massaging the inner part of my foot here, where um, where the, the tendons come around and grab onto the bones on the bottom of your foot. I feel that. So the I would think the only benefit of being in that position in that way that I, that I can think of is um, would be to kind of give you a little bit of, of that reflexology on that point. So it wouldn't be bad. If it feels good, it's fine. Yeah, it's totally fine. It just depends really on what you're, what you're aiming for, you know, like what you're really looking for and what kind of benefits you're hoping to attain, you know? Huh. Yeah, for some reason, my other, the website, you're welcome. The, um, it looks like the website didn't go through. So let me try that one more time. Mm -hmm. da, da, da. 
stretch gtv .com. That's the one you want. All right, my friends. Well, if there are no more questions, then we'll go ahead and log off for the day. Enjoy your Saturday. And remember, there's no live session next week because I'm going to be at the beach. All right. I'll see you guys in two weeks. Bye-bye. <laughs>